When domestic automakers exited the mid-sized truck category in 2012, it left a gaping hole in the marketplace. Since then, the Toyota Tacoma has carried on virtually uncontested, until now. Following a two-year hiatus, GM's mid-sizers are back and ready to bring the fight to Toyota. But talk is cheap. Let's find out if the Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon finally have something for the undisputed champ. On paper, GM's middleweight pickups could be viewed as something as a revolution, especially when you consider their roster of class-exclusive features like an available damped tailgate, forward collision and lane departure warning, and an embedded 4G hotspot. Although the Colorado and Canyon hold down a slight advantage in terms of available feature content, no mid-sized truck in the market can match the GM twins in the areas of ride and handling and acceleration. A trio of modern engines comprised of a direct injecting 2.5 liter four cylinder, 3.6 liter V6, and 2.8 liter four cylinder turbo diesel team with a standard six speed manual transmission or optional six speed automatic to form the most extensive powertrain lineup in the segment. At the same time, every engine must contend with bulky exterior dimensions, a traditional ladder type frame, and inherent aerodynamic limitations. The result is fuel economy scores of around 22 MPG combined in both four-cylinder and V6 models. Not to add insult to injury, but the Ford F-150 fitted with the 2.7-liter EcoBoost engine achieved 26.3 MPG on the highway during a recent road test. Compare that to the 25.6 MPG we logged in our V6-equipped Colorado, and it's accurate to say mid-sized trucks are still no more efficient than their full-sized kin. Full disclosure, the Duramax diesel was not available for assessment at the time of this publishing. Off-road, the Canyon in Colorado's strong suit is hard and fast running. The Z71's specially tuned springs and shocks made quick work of high-speed sweepers and rough straightaways. Lock the rear differential and pop off the efficiency-enhancing lower valance, and the Z71 shines as a competent rock crawler as well. Returning to the surface on which you'll spend most of your time left us equally impressed. The cabin is as quiet, if not quieter than many modern passenger cars like the Honda Accord or Toyota Camry. While the supremely compliant ride and well-calibrated steering combined to produce a driving experience that would give some crossover SUVs a run for their money. Okay, perhaps that last bit was a gross exaggeration, but GM's mid-sizers do ride considerably better than the aging Nissan Frontier and Toyota Tacoma. In confined urban settings, however, tidier exterior measurements make the Frontier and Tacoma easier to park and maneuver, but the Colorado and Canyon counter once again when it comes to cargo access. Helping facilitate the loading and unloading of cargo is a segment exclusive damp tailgate, a corner step rear bumper, an integrated grab handle derived from the Chevy Avalanche, and once inside, you'll find a remote activated cargo light and the usual fixed tie down points. But if you're looking for adjustable tie down cleats, the Toyota Tacoma is still the only game in town. Both versions can handle payloads of up to 1,500 pounds, with max towing checking in right around 7,000 pounds. Manufacturer specs aside, we found power to be inadequate when hauling loads in excess of 4,500 pounds. By now it's clear the Colorado and Canyon are effectively indistinguishable in terms of mechanicals and capacities. But for our money, the GMC is the superior choice, and here's why. The Canyon replaces the Colorado's hard plastics, firm armrests, and coarse seating fabric with a soft touch dash, densely padded armrests, and higher quality upholstery for about the same amount of money. If you're a diehard Chevy fan who could care less about interior comfort, forget we said anything. A sore point affecting both models involves missed opportunities. For starters, the driver's seat adjusts only six ways, meaning shorter drivers are forced to deal with a completely flat seat bottom in the raised position. GM also could have dipped into its existing parts bin to incorporate passive entry with push-button start in lieu of a conventional ignition system. Even so, 
Blowing $38,000 on a fully optioned Colorado LT or Canyon SLT gets you other premium goodies like an 8-inch touchscreen with navigation, a 7-speaker Bose audio system, four USB ports, heated front seats, automatic climate control, OnStar safety telematics, and an easy lift and lower tailgate. For under $22,000, base extended cab versions include a backup camera, automatic headlight control, front bucket seats, six airbags, and a six speaker audio system linked to a 4.2 inch display. Those looking for a serviceable rear seat will need to toss in an extra $4,800 for a crew cab head with a five foot two inch short box. Expect to pay an additional $1,900 for the standard six foot two inch cargo bed. When it comes time to sell, the Colorado and Canyon currently maintain significantly lower residuals than that of the class leading Tacoma, due in large part to a questionable history for reliability and build quality. While the Colorado and Canyon might not be the game changers many had hoped for, we commend GM for breathing new life into a segment ravaged by stagnation and abandonment. And for the first time in nearly a decade, the Toyota Tacoma has a fight on its hands.